Hi everyone and welcome to another video. In this one I'd like to answer a question about asthma control. It's a question that I received on the channel and I'll put it up for you so we can read it together and then just sort of dissect it a little bit and talk about the various things that are in this question. So first of all, it's this one from Andre Wadey. I'm an expat in the Philippines. Manila is very far away. Uh, where I stay at the moment, the doc is not specialized in asthma. I got uh, 160 Symbicort and Salbutamol Ventolin. I get on monthly basis bed flare-ups and chest infections. It means I almost can't breathe. I'm sick for two weeks at a time. So that's not great, obviously. Can't eat, can't do anything. So the doctor gave me 10 days, always azithromycin and prednisone. Nebulizers don't work. What can I do to get less flare-ups? Do I need additional medicine on a daily basis? My chest x-ray is good. Lungs are clear, no enlarged heart. So first of all, there's quite a lot of things to discuss here. Now, first of all, I'm not your doctor. So Andre, if you are watching this video or anyone else who's watching this video, you really need to try and talk to your doctor frequently and try to get advice that's personalized for your case. So obviously I can present to you general information that may or may not apply in your case. So you please your, use your own judgment. Please think about ways to travel somewhere to see a doctor that can help you. I think that's really important. But to just tell you a little bit about this question. So first of all, uh, obviously, you know, wherever you are in the world, you may be far away from specialized doctors. That doesn't mean that a non-specialist cannot treat asthma appropriately. It's actually one of these conditions that can be treated quite well by even non uh, pulmonologists, because there are quite a lot of guidelines to help the treatment of asthma, even for non-specialists. So there is something called the GINA asthma guideline. So basically, let me put, just put that up quickly. So uh, GINA asthma. This is something that I can show you a little bit. So this is it, the Global Initiative for Asthma. And this is a, an organization, an international organization that produces these GINA reports. And these are guidelines to help clinicians um, achieve better asthma control for their patients. So this is something that can be useful. Um, I don't think it's very patient-centric. It's more for clinicians. But a lot of doctors, even non-specialists, will use these GINA guidelines to help the treatment of asthma. There are many guidelines out there. But as a rough idea, I think most doctors will be familiar with these guidelines and will try to treat asthma according to these guidelines. So even doctors in the Philippines or wherever, Saudi Arabia, <laughs> Romania, Russia, America, they will all try to follow some sort of guidance, even if they are non-specialists. That being said, let's talk a little bit about the treatment for asthma. So treatment for asthma usually relies on inhaled corticosteroids to control the inflammation in the airways, and that will lead to better asthma control and prevent flare-ups, prevent asthma exacerbations, prevent asthma attacks. Now, this inhaled corticosteroid can be found in various inhalers. Sometimes it can be given on its own, so that can be something like a clenid inhaler, or sometimes it can be given as part of a Symbicort inhaler, which contains both an inhaled corticosteroid, but also a bronchodilator, a medication that opens up the airways, and helps you breathe better. And then salbutamol, or Ventolin, as it's called, the blue inhaler, is a short-acting bronchodilator. So this is, again, a medication that helps during an asthma attack to open up the airways to, to help you breathe better. So both of these inhalers there together, they're, I would say, a good treatment for asthma in most situations. This is just my opinion. However, depending on the person, um, they may have worse asthma better controlled asthma, etc. So it may mean that the doses of these inhalers may mean need to be increased sometimes. So for example, the dose of inhaled corticosteroids contained in Symbicort, in this 160 Symbicort, so there are various doses, may not be enough to control your asthma. There may be also issues related to how you use an, your inhalers. So if you're not using the right technique to, to take the, these inhalers, such as Symbicort, you may not be getting the maximum benefit, even though the treatment is absolutely fine in theory. So the practice and the theory is quite important. So I would say the first thing, if you are getting a lot of chest infection, well, chest infections, I'm not sure if that's what's going on here, but if you're getting a lot of asthma flare-ups, the first thing would be to discuss with your doctor, even if they're not a specialist, to determine whether you are, you are first using the inhalers correctly. So, you know, for example, the Symbicort inhaler is this inhaler. Are you definitely using the right technique to take the inhaler? And I can just demonstrate this quickly in this video. So basically with the Symbicort, if, as it is right here, basically you hold it, twist one side, twist back, it clicks, 
it's ready to be used. You breathe out and then you need to breathe in forcefully and deeply, hold your breath for 10 seconds or as long as comfortable, and then let the air out. So it looks a little bit like this. And slowly release. So that's basically how you would use Symbicord and then you would put the cap back on. And that's usually a good technique. Now, obviously, this may not be the only thing that's going on here. So if you are getting a lot of flare-ups, there may be, like I said, first of all, something to do with the dose of medication not being enough, the inhaler technique not being optimal, or there may be some allergen in your environment or something else, some other asthma trigger that's still reinforcing that inflammation in the airway. So that can be another situation that's going on in this scenario. So I don't know what exactly is going on, but basically what your doctor is doing in the cases of flare-ups is to give you antibiotics and steroids, so oral steroids, tablets. This is normally what happens. It's not necessarily a bad way, a bad strategy to treat these flare-ups. However, if you're getting so many, maybe once uh, every month, it's not really a well-controlled asthma, in my opinion. So there may be a trigger in the environment that's some allergen, whether it's dust, whether it's some plants, pollens. I'm not sure what you've got around you, what your asthma is related to. There may be something occupational, so something related to your work that's reinforcing the asthma. I'm not sure what's going on, but these are things that you would need to probably note down and talk to your doctor and see if there's anything you can notice in your environment that you can change, perhaps what are the days in which you feel best? So if you're, for example, going to work and you're feeling really poorly, but then at the weekend you tend to feel a little bit better if you're at home or the other way around, these are things to keep in mind. You need to be quite aware of how your condition is behaving. And then we get on to the last part of the comment. So this is related to uh, azithromycin and the prednisone. So I made a little comment about that, but let me just sort of clarify. So during an exacerbation of asthma, what happens is that you've got a lot of inflammation in the airways and the inhaler itself with the inhaled corticosteroid is not enough to keep the asthma under control. So in that case, your doctor may have to prescribe you some tablets that contain uh, corticosteroids. So th these are the prednisone tablets. Uh, prednisolone in other countries, medrol, some other, other sort of therapies can be given. These are high doses of corticosteroids, so much more than is in an inhaler. And you're swallowing that tablet, it goes towards the rest of your body, so it co helps control the inflammation to a greater extent. However, being on in corticosteroids as tablets on these high doses for a very long time is not a good idea, especially if there's another way to control the asthma, especially with inhalers. That's because they can have side effects in the long run. So if you have to repeat these treatments every month, you're getting a cumulative dose that's quite high. So I would say it's probably a good idea to go back to your doctor and discuss what are the better strategies to keep this under control. The azithromycin is an antibiotic. It can be helpful if you indeed have a chest infection, but I'm just wondering if these flare-ups are indeed always chest infections or if there's just a trigger that's worsening your asthma and it seems like you've got a chest infection, but it's not the case. Then I, I have to, to also ask, for example, it looks like in the profile photo here, you've got a picture with a, of a child. So if you have children, sometimes this may happen. They go to kindergarten, they go with other children, they bring a lot of viruses home. And then, you know, children can get up to five viral infections per year. If one of the parents suffers with asthma, they may get some of these infections. So it's really important for parents of children to have their asthma pretty well under control because they may sort of pick up these viruses and it's just not a normal thing that can happen in life. So when you get a viral infection in your chest, it can actually make asthma worse. It can worsen the inflammation. Your body's fighting off the virus, creates some more inflammation that can worsen the asthma control. So all of these things play a role. Now, I'm sorry, this uh, episode, this video was a little bit all over the place, but I just wanted to sort of give you my perspective on this situation when you're on a theoretically good asthma treatment, but it doesn't seem to work as well. So it can be that the inhaler technique is not good. It can be that the doses of inhaled medication are not enough. It can be that there may be triggers that you haven't recognized yet in your work, in your home, that may need to be removed to gain control of your asthma. It may be uh, something else like a viral infection you pick off, uh, pick up off other people and you, 
in those situations, you may need to boost your inhaled medication to get past that infection while not worsening the asthma. So there's a lot of things that you need to maybe think about. This was it for this episode. If you have further questions, do leave them in the comment section on the YouTube channel. I'll be happy to try to respond in the future with future episodes, future videos. Thank you very much for listening. All the best and good health.